Hello everyone, my name is Eric. Today it is a great honor for me to share some experiences and tips on how to make a wise use of the PPH in China. As you may know, the PPH refers to Patent Prosecution Highway, which means if you have your application allowed in one country, which is called the OEE Office of Earlier Examination, then for counterpart application in another country, which is called the OLE, Office of Later Examination. The persecution for that counterpart application can be accelerated based on the OEE allowed claims. Now the CNIPA has signed bilateral treaties on PPH with more than 30 countries and regions. And of course, the PCT PPH is also available in China. For the detailed information about those more than 30 countries and regions, please refer to the CNIPA's official website. Although the allowances from more than 30 countries can be used as a basis for requesting PPH in China, we do recommend our clients to choose the OEE from the IP file because that will bring us extra flexibility and benefits. And so far, China is not a member of the PPH Montana. The PPH system brings us significant benefits and all of these are for free. Firstly, the issuance of the first office action can be accelerated with a PPH request. In China, in a normal process, the waiting time for the first office action may be about 12 months, and in some extreme situations, we may have to wait for up to three years for the first office action. But after filing a PPH request, we may expect to receive the first office action within only two months. And partly because of that reduced waiting time for the first office action, the total examination time during the whole prosecution can also be reduced. With a PPH request, we may expect to receive a final result, which includes both an allowance and a final rejection within about 12 months. And the average number of the office action during the prosecution is only one. But I just want to emphasize that in our daily work, we seldom receive a direct allowance with no office action issued before. That means I guess the real average number of the office action should be a little more than one. Technically, the PPH system only accelerates the persecution, but does not really affect the final result. From some official statistic information, it is said that the grant rate can also be increased with the PPH request. But from our appearance in our daily work, we don't really see this. And due to the above mentioned benefits, the PPH is well welcomed by our applicants. Last year in China, the CNIPA received about 5,700 PPH requests. And just for your reference, the total number of invention applications last year in China is about 1.6 million. One tenth of them are from foreign applicants. So that means one out of 30 foreign invention applications takes the advantage of the PPH system. Among those more than 5,000 PPH requests last year, half of them are filed based on working results from the US PTO and requests based on working results from the JPO count supporter. In total, about 95% of the PPH requests are based on the working results from the IP5.
since the PPA system is beneficial and welcomed by the applicants, then how should we make a wise of use of it in China? Firstly, the timing for filing a PPA request. In China, a PPA request should be filed after the application is published, after or at the same time of a request for substantive examination, and before any examination has been made by the examiner on that application. But in practice, we have no way to get to know when the examiner really finished his or her examination. So in practice, uh, the third condition will be that we can file a PPH request anytime before we receive the, office, uh, the first office action. This plot shows the timeline for filing a PPH request and the, the green part shows when it is allowed to file that request. So a PPH request will be filed after the request for substantive examination, after the publication of that application, and before the issuance of the first office action. Sometimes the request for substantive examination is made after the application is published, so the PPH request can be filed at the same time of that request for substantive uh, substantive examination. And in China, you can file up to two PPH requests for one application. And then, what are the documents we should prepare for requesting a PPH? This is the Chinese PPH request form, which can be downloaded from the CNIPA's official website and together with it a detailed guidance is, uh, is given. You may find that this request form shares similar items and structures with those in some other countries. That's true. And I'll go through this form and uh, emphasize some unique parts that's, uh, that, that are important in China. So the, the first part is the Chinese application number and some information about the OEE application. The last line here, the relationship between OEE application and the Chinese application is very important in China. So usually we have some simple relationships between those two applications, for example, the Chinese application and the OEE application may correspond to different national phases of the same international application. Or the Chinese application may claim priority to that OEE application. And if the OEE is one of the IP5, we may have some extended feasible situations. For example, the Chinese application and the OEE application may claim the same priority to a third country application or the OEE application which is allowed first may claim priority to the Chinese application on which we want to make a file a PPH request. Uh, in that uh, Chinese request form, full and detailed information uh, about the relationship between the OEE and the Chinese application is requested. For example, if we have this very complex situation, for example, uh, we want to file a PPH request for the OLE application, which is a divisional application in China, D1, having a parent application CN1. And at the meanwhile, uh, there's a, another divisional application D2 in China. And the parent application CN1 claims priority to the OEE application, which is already allowed, for example, in the US. 
uh, the application US one. And in the US, that uh, application US one has a continuation application of US two, and then a further compute. Uh, application US3 claiming priority to US2. Well, for example, if we do have this complex situation, all these six applications and the relationships among them should be provided and listed in the Chinese request form. That means all these six blocks and all the arrows representing the relationships uh, in this picture need to be explained in that request form. And then we need to give some information about the file of the documents related to the OEE application in the PPH request form. If the OEE is one of the IP file, we don't really need to prepare or provide these documents uh, at our end, we just need to tick some boxes here and ask the Chinese examiner to retrieve the needed documents from the, their side. And the next part is also very important in China. The correspondences between the OEE allowed claims and the Chinese claims to be examined. There are three types of correspondences which are allowed uh, to be the basis for a PPH request in China. First, uh, the Chinese claim may be literally the same as the OEE allowed claim, or the Chinese claim may only differ in the dependency from the allowed claim. And thirdly, the Chinese claim can be further restricted based on the OEE allowed claim. But in practice, considering that in China, the requirements on the basement or support for claim amendments are relatively strict, uh, we don't really recommend this third type of correspondence. We, we'd better to avoid it. And since we have to meet these requirements on the correspondences, initiative amendments may be needed on the Chinese application. The deadline for filing initiative amendments in China is three months after entering the substantive examination, which is, of course, after the request for substantive examination. So uh, from this plot, uh, it can be seen that before we have to file our request form in front of the CNIGA, we will have plenty of time to have the Chinese claims amended uh, according to the OEE allowed claims. And then we also need to list the working results from the OEE the required working results from different offices are given in that official guidance, which is shown here. Basically, the allowances and the rejections. And then we need to list the references uh, mentioned during the prosecution for that OEE application. Here, uh, may I emphasize that we need to list all the mentioned references during the prosecution. That means not only the uh, references cited by the examiner in their opinions need to be given, but also those appeared in the search re report should be listed here. And finally, we have a signature and date. So since here we need a full list of the, all the working results from the OEE and a full list of all the references uh, cited by the uh, OEE. We, we strongly recommend that uh, we should not file this PPH request form until we have the, that OEE patent published. 
That means we may want to have the OE allow claims get ready in our hand as early as possible, so that we can have the Chinese claims amended accordingly by initiative amendments before the deadline. But we just uh, wait for the official publication of the OE patent. That I think means the close of that OE application. And then if we get the, the very final information of that OE patent, that means uh, no new reference will be cited or no new working result will be issued, then we can file the PPH request uh, with the CNIPA. So uh, just uh, in sum, we want to have the OE allow claims get ready as early as possible, but file the PPH request form with the CNIPA as late as possible to make sure that nothing is missed in that request form. So generally speaking, filing a PPH request in China is easy, and especially if uh, the OEE is one of the IP5, the documents we really need to prepare at our end are not many, and most of the works are for your local agents, so we do recommend our clients to make a wise use of the PPH system in China. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions?